everyone Welcome to my second webinar hello facebook hello youtube hello linkedin by the way i'm ams the product specialist of bmed and i'm excited to share with you my second webinar which is what is pressure ulcer i've invited two guest speakers and i'm going to introduce to you our first speaker for this webinar, okay? So it is all about pressure ulcer and what is the latest treatment and management of pressure ulcer. Okay, without further ado, I'd like to introduce my first speaker who is a wound management nurse for almost five years in Glen Eagles Hospitals. Let's welcome the most adorable wound nurse in Glen Eagles Hospital, Sister Camelia. Thank you, Sister Camelia, for accepting my invitation to you and become my speaker for the pressure ulcer. Okay, good, very good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Ems, for your kind introductions. It's my honor to like give this opportunity to share every with everybody on this pressure ulcer. Um, what's the pressure ulcer? It's etiology and it's a kind of like prevention measures. All right. Okay, sister, I'll give you the floor and you can start sharing okay. pressure ulcer. Okay, great, great. Thanks, Ems. Yeah, so shall we start? Yeah. Okay, very good afternoon, everybody. As uh, I'm mentioned, my name is Camelia. I'm the wound management nurse at the Glanger Hospital in, under this IHH Healthcare Singapore. I've been as a nurse for the past, thing, past 17 years. I've been in wound care for the past uh, 11 years. Yeah, so today I'll be sharing with you all on this uh, pressure injury prevention is management, but because of uh, time straight, right? I talk more sharing on this, uh, the prevention part. Okay, all right, next slide, please. Yeah. So today I'll be sharing with you all the definition and development of pressure injury. And this is risk factors for our development of pressure injury. And also how to detect using the assessment, risk assessment tool. Then after that, we'll be using the skin pressure injury care bundle to perform this as a prevention measure. All right, next slide. Okay, so what is pressure injury? Okay, definitely it's a related to pressure, right? It's an injury. So basically, it's a localized damage to the skin or underlying soft tissue. It's localized, all right? And over a bony prominence. A lot of times, example, some patients develop skin injury over perineal or pelvic region, maybe just near to perianal site. But it's not bony prominence. No, it's not considered a pressure injury, which means it must be localized damage and with the over uh, bony prominences, all right. Also, it sometimes can be related to medical device. As uh, we use this in patients on the NG tube or urine catheter, there's a pressure contact with our mucosa layer. Huh? Even maybe using just our ETT or like nasal uh, uh, prong, I mean, even nasal prong, all right. Huh? Okay. Also, because uh, definitely it's a uh, Pressure, right? Once patients are compact bomb, have a prolonged pressure uh, with a combination of shear forces of friction, all right, then patients can develop this pressure injury. Lastly, not the lead, uh, is a to tissue tolerance, okay? With the, each individual, right? It's actually the different, all right. People like me that have a trip, maybe uh, all, all the patients develop pressure injury. Yeah. So it depends on the, the individual, the tissue tolerance, like uh, their microclimate, nutrition, perfusion, and their comorbidities. Uh -huh. Also, the, the condition of soft tissue. So, for pressure injury, there are how many types of pressure injury are there? Basically, there are six types. Okay, so from the uh, basic to the seriety, right? So we have a stage one to stage four. Stage one basically just our redness. Redness is a bit, you must make sure it's whether it's blanchable or, or non blanchable. If less is a blanchable, it means just not really at the stage one at the moment. So which means make sure you press on the skin. Press on the redness skin, redness part, right? If let's say you're able to see the original of skin color, which means called blanchable. So blanchable not considered one until you press on the redness, the redness never go off. Huh? It's considered non-blanchable. It's called already stage one pressure injury, means the damage already there. Huh? Yeah. Come to the what's it called, called stage four. What stage four pressure injury? Stage four pressure injury basically is already go to the 
muscle layer or even tendon or bone. All right. So this is uh, cause the worst stage of the pressure injury. So another two types of pressure injury, like a deep tissue injury in short, DTI. So which, which, which uh, when can we call DTI? DTI because already like, a, like a, the internal damage, right? You can see it already going to the bone side already. So it's kind of the damage, uh, pressure injury. So later on, right, the tissue like not really reverse back, you can be good, become a stage four now. Huh? Yeah, unstageable basically is uh, the tissue, the uh, pressure drain is covered, covered with a layer of a necrotic tissue. So we're not able to uh, see underneath always at the granulating tissue, uh, like subcutaneous tissue layer, or it's actually muscle layer, right? So it's called unstageable. Huh? So this constitution needs to really deep right to see how deep is the uh, wound cavity so can differentiate what which stage are the patient at. All right. Yeah. Okay. This is a this will give a rough idea. What's a pressure injury? Huh? Next slide, please. Yeah. So what's uh the Cause pressure injury basically is a direct, there's definitely the pressure la, like people you and me able to walk around ambulator and there's no problem. La, huh? But once patients become bad bomb, like not able to move, move around, right? So there's a continued pressure lying on bed, right? They become a uh, uh, how to uh, put the pressure uh, the pressure or the bone against the heart surfaces cause a bl uh, blood vessel right the supply is a cut off right they often cause at the same time the friction of the skin against the surface cause the damage huh? yeah all right next slides okay so when the pressure the uh, pressure injury the, uh, can occur so it's an example for like normal if like, the person have a normal like capillary pressure is that we have a, a normal uh, or capillary size have all the blood vessels right you have other micro blood vessels uh -huh, your arterial and veins so it's a pressure still at the 12 uh, 12 to 32 right that pressure still if like no we're not divide any pressure uh, injury at the moment but however if like see the patients have a prolonged an uh, intensive pressure, right? So if another co causative agent like a combination, right, with the shear, which means uh, later talk about shear, that on that, huh? Yeah. So uh, the combination increase the risk of patient develop the pressure injury. Okay, next slide. So after that, right? Maybe the bony, our well, bony patient, bony prominences, right? Huh? The contact, the capillary pressure, uh, uh reached of above thirty two mm mmHg already, right? Uh, cause some like blood flow. Then after uh, the oxygen, like a uh, nutrition supply to tissue is cut off, right? They cause the cell death. Actually, literature shows that if a patient have with a continuously pressure of seventy mmHg, huh, can can cause this called irreversible tissue damage just within two hours. All right, yeah. So next slide, please. So this is a picture, actually, a uh, diagram shows that like, uh, our tissue tolerance, the different uh, tissue tolerance and uh, uh, duration pressure. Uh, huh? It's example, it's a patient's uh, skin layer, skin contact layer, skin layer come to the, uh, to the uh, to the surface right bodies are the cut surface huh it's actually you can see at uh, you uh six even at six mm she right but the within two hours right actually no pressure injury develop after you beyond two hours above right see the pressure injury occurs all right so this is why we actually our turning always two hourly right some people may ask hey, so why can we do four hourly even mid three hourly right so that's our threshold is two hours not two hours at so that's what you're doing. Always do two hourly turning. All right. Yeah. Next slide, please. So there's a uh, pressure injury. What the other risk factors? So basically, two uh, categories you call it uh, the tissue uh, tolerance and the pressure, direct pressure on it. So the tissue tolerance, there's the intrinsic factors. Basically, it's a uh, patient uh, itself and the uh, extrinsic factors. Uh -huh. What are the intrinsic factors? Uh, patients have some chronic illness. It's actually internally affect the uh, patient's healing, like huh? chronic illness. A patient may be like a stroke or this, uh, or this patient's having vascular disease, even nutrition. As we know, nutrition plays an important role in wound healing and also the skin integrity huh yeah the morphophase may patients are more calm to the elderly correct now so for those patients actually for youngsters we don't really happen to those uh patients have developed pressure injury once they come to elderly right they can become more vulnerable group huh? all right of course skin temperature yeah and then oxygen delivery all these are interesting internally affect on the tissue tolerance uh, to the threshold patient itself right to the 
uh, the contact with the okay the surface uh, I should see huh yeah the attracting factors like her uh, outside lah uh, like her uh, shear what's a shear uh, it's like and patients on the bed, especially sitting upright. With sitting up, patients by gravity, these are going down the tissue, all right? But how, there's a, okay. But however, when you got on the bed, right, the, the, the pull, right, there's a pull the, the, the bed, right, pull the patient become a parallel, the, uh, the opposite direction. Direction make the tissue no, 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 no longer parallel, uh, skin, yeah, the tissue parallel to the uh, um, our muscle, right, the, the side. So become like there's a shear there. So, huh? Then, of course, another one is uh, uh, moisture. Moisture also is with other strong factors, like uh, when patients have an incontinence, right, have a contact, I mean, that can cause damage to the pelvic uh, region skin, right, can very easily break down. Uh, huh? That's why it's also another trigger factor. Friction definitely also because it was friction, right? We move patients left, right, up and down, cause all the rubbing on the skin, right? Yeah. So the of course the, the last is a uh, direct uh, pressure. Basically, patients are not able to feel a lot of times uh, patients actually bad bond, they're not able to tell whether it's the area because once patient develop it's supposedly can too long pressure, there's a the nerve is affected already. It is supposed to tell you it's pain, but however, they are not able to tell you. So it's like kind of like they, they're not able to move, right? So the sensory is not uh, not able to that and also the impact mobility definitely once patients are uh, bed born or chair born right this is just the uh, pressure injury occur so that's why we always see how to make a person to be pressure injury free just need pressure free all right yeah next slides please okay so we all know about pressure injury right so all the risk factors so how are the assessment to help us to detect it means that uh, to do as a the risk assessment. So, which group of people as a risk? So, we can do prevent from it happening, right? So, we all know, I believe everybody familiar with this called breathing skill assessment. You are looking at these uh, six uh, areas of uh, uh, areas to look at here to other risk assessment, right? Like a sensory, moisture, the activity and mobility, nutrition, even friction and shear, all right? If a patient scores 16 and below, right, which means shows already have moderate to high risk of a uh, risk with developing pressure injury, all right? Yeah. So, which means, I should say, every patient come to hospital, right, is need to do a risk assessment on that, a subsequent need to do a daily, all right? Checking, huh? Yeah. Next slide, please. So what are the common signs of pressure injury? We are not a pressure injury, pressure injury, right? Talk about. So when patients are lying down, as uh, uh, sitting down, actually you can see here, huh? The when you, regardless lying down, sit down, right? You can see the sacrum region that is here side and the here side, uh, even the shoulder plate, huh? These are the common areas patients developing a pressure injuries, especially okay, patients. Uh, uh, you see the. Also, this part, this is a sacrum. You see, no matter how right, the sacrum size is very amount of ten patients, almost the patient with pressure injury, right? Almost eight patients are uh, developed this uh, pressure injury or the sacrum region, huh? So these are the risk areas we need to look at, it, especially when patients are uh, bed born, uh, huh? Every time do assessment time to check, make sure the areas no develop any awareness, any issue. All right. Yeah. Next slides. Okay. We will see. Prevention always better than cure because once a patient developed a pressure injury, a stage four pressure injury, right, they take months to heal and they're also very, very costly. So we always see, always do a prevention on the it from it happening. Huh? So how do we build prevention? So, so we use the call this a uh, skin bundle, SSK, RN, Agorinia, Maham bundle. We're looking at all these areas like a uh, skin assessment, so look at surface keep moving, uh, incontinence, and nutrition, even the device, medical device related. So well, I go through with you uh, one by one. So what other areas you're looking at? How should we utilize this skin bundle? It's a very good uh, tool, actually systematic guide to our nurses on the ground to look at uh, the uh, patients who are at risk at developing pressure injury. All right, next slide, please. Yeah. So first one we'll be looking at a is a uh, next uh, skin inspection. All right. So which means okay, every patient come to us, right? We need to do a thorough skin assessment, right? From head to toe, huh? This is our basic, right? We want to see anything is uh, 
uh, underline, I mean, there's a baseline for us, right? So we need to have a basically early detection for any redness and discoloration of the uh, pressure point. You see this picture here, you can see some uh, dark color, black, dark black maroon color skin there all right even some redness present at the coccyx region huh yeah so even patients under prophylactic dressing understood that but a lot of people uh, a lot of times actually when patient a risk we apply this uh, called five layer uh, foam dressing it's called my place but i said dressing right so you apply that also some people say you know, oh if you apply the prophylactic dressing right we may not need to check check it's already protector right but however we still need to check it every uh, shift right i think to check make sure there's a no development any pressure injury there any redness huh all right and also after three days need to change it all right yeah next slide please so after this under skin uh, inspection right also need to check on the device part especially for those patients at the uh, NG tube. Huh? I know we are changing the uh, micropod tape, right? It's, uh, almost daily, but uh, make sure we secure the time, right? The NG tube not really like uh, touching like uh, on the mucosa layer, the upper wall of the nasal, uh, nasal, nasal nose side, all right? So because a lot of times patients tend to develop this uh, device with a pressure injury over the nasal side, even the urine catheter also, not not really uh, to secure too tight. Sometimes also you can see there's a line here, right here, you can see it's actually the, uh, this one, these are from diapers, yeah. So urine catheter from the, actually the, uh, in, because the uh, mucosa membrane that damage, uh, keep on like rubbing, also it can become a contact pressure, uh, too long, never relief. Yeah. So basically, we need to every time mix of this NG or uh, like a uh, dealing catheter side, the microbiotic tape, right? I need to assess and check every 12 hourly. Okay. Yeah. And also, not only that, even regardless patient, any like other. Uh, uh, device related on special patient on CPAP. You see the patient's face uh, because of uh, long term of a uh, CPAP here, huh? That pressure causes a uh, skin breakdown here. So, which means before that, we need to say, hey, if patients on this item, so any uh, pressure contact, should we apply anything to protect first or not? Okay, all right, thanks. Next slide, please. Okay, so yeah, now let's kind of support surface because of the assessment already, right? After the need to patient, you know, patients at risk develop this pressure uh, injury, right? So it's a uh, we need to give patient offload. We want to patient to be pressure free, right? Because we cannot, it's like we have to patient to be as not lighter pressure as well. As it mentioned early on, the tolerance, right? The pressure, too intensive pressure patient have the more high risk patient develop pressure injury. So we need to really use this call a mattress in a big patient, a bed bone, and lie down in the bed, right? To relieve the uh, offload, give offload, especially if able to, uh, like alternating, uh -huh, alternating a mattress to able to give patients offload on that. And also it's patient to, you try to use the sliding sheet, sliding sheet to, sliding sheet to help to patient to uh, move uh, to, to shift patient right because you want to, re to reduce the friction or even sit cushion with patient sitting out on bed huh yeah sitting on bed too because patients sit out some which part the tend to develop pressure injury the the escape side right so want to offload huh yeah to keep say sit cushion to help offload and also of course a uh, prophylactic dressing i believe we all body doing very good and every patient come in right we're all using this uh, called five layer uh, prophylactic form dressing to help the patient to offload am i right yeah they also of course to uh, to patients on drains on tubing right try to away from that don't give let's see light patient lie on the urine catheter lie on the ng tube later on the face that there's a line there all right, try to make sure it's all a patient away of this gadget, huh? or it's this device. So as you see, for this uh, support, right, so this place very important role for patient to have offload. So all the patients at risk, as on 16, scope 50 and below already, we need to, patient must, must, it's a must to put on a mattress or secretion to have our offload. All right, next slide, please. So keep moving, keep moving basically. So patient must be turned every two hourly, all right? Two hourly to turn offload also to help. As mentioned earlier on, right? We must turn two hourly, huh? By like, if a patient already developed pressure injury, we tell ourselves, don't let patients supine. 
try not to, huh? Because already there's a wound there to turn bilaterally, all right? Especially with the head or the back elevation is about 30 degree or lesser. Based on literature shows that patients actually with the the, the head is actually uh, 30 degrees lower that tend to develop pressure injuries are uh, lower, all right? Okay, so also we just monitor duration patients sitting out with, if let's say patient no PI right, pressure injury, right, just try to sit less than two hours, uh, already pre present with the pressure injury, they try to less as a uh, one hour, all right? Yeah, okay, Ken, next slide. Incontinence, uh, incontinence is another area we need to look at for those patients, right? So we become bad bound, especially have uh, uh, losing bowels. Uh -huh. it's because once patient bad bound or diaper, right, turn to the peri inner side uh, to develop this uh, 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 contact metal is too output or urine output, right? So the skin very easy to damage, get damage. So after damage, is always, you see, once damage or healing take time to occur. So we want to prevent from the, the, this damage happen, right? So first thing you want to use the pH balance cleanser to cleanse the stool output to gain, regain uh, back our skin pH. Uh, is I don't know what skin pH uh, as they did, right? Four to six. That's why I want to uh, skin uh, become retained. Uh, uh, less than six uh, is acidic, right? So the kind of skin integrity strength is there. After keep the area dry, of course, you use uh, all the skin barrier spray and or cream, even zinc oxide to help protect this or isolate uh, protect the skin. Okay, after that, also to try to use uh, isolate the stool output from the uh, skin contact. All right, next slide. Okay, so if let's see that the patient have a uh, quite bad, uh, like a uh, incontinence like a, a stool output right so we can use the it's called like this uh, flexi seal to contain the patients are really loose about contain the stool output uh -huh, like to as a patient is like a liquid so which means the stool not able to contaminate with the peri, uh, perineal region or this is a inner plaque huh? this inner plaque need to change every six hours six to eight hours all right this flexi seal can use up to uh 29 days after 29 days if the patient needed can just change a new one all right another is for urine example for those patients huh uh they were quite bad the skin side very uh, okay denoted plus plus right so we good to use this uh urine catheter to contain the urine but this unknown sample patient uh, people mentioned in hey, too long use it can cause UTI, all right? So another alternatively for this uh, guys, uh, female, a male patient uh, can use euro, euro sheath instead, all right? Yeah, okay, uh, next slide. Okay, we'll come to the nutri nutrition. Nutrition, yes, is very important also, but as uh, we all know, it's like uh, for nutrition screening, as we all know for hospital patient come admitted to hospital, right? Every patient will be assessed on this nutrition part, huh? Because if patient nutrition is not uh, in male, male nutrition, right? So tend to develop also pressure injury and skin integrity will be affected. Uh -huh. So we'll make sure patients uh, um, have uh, received enough nutrition. If let's say patient really need that, right, can refer to a dietitian, right, for further evaluation. And uh, after every, uh, after seven days, we do assess patient uh, if let's say need that, right. So uh, make sure patients are uh, being looked after like uh, the nutrition part whether they need on TPN or any supplement uh -huh, protein intake yeah thanks uh, next slide uh, last not the least patient family education so we are not only because come patient immediately to hospital we don't uh, only the nurses looking after the patient we want to involve the patient family member to tell them actually they also play a very important part especially patient going home to look after to prevent this patient develop pre-pressure injury. So we have our page called patient family education pamphlet to give to the respective uh, relatives. So for, for those patients who are at risk, huh, that at least they have the awareness of that, know, knowing um, the how to do it, then subsequently they can prevent from occur happening. Uh -huh. Next slide. Uh, this is a uh, how does it look like actually for our hospital we are using that so sharing all the patient uh, to give other patients uh, to can use that huh yeah so okay next slide okay in summary uh, okay so basically when patients uh, uh, admitted to the hospital right so we firstly we do a risk assessment whether this patient and any high risk is all low risk or no risk at Give uh, a PI development. So after that, we we'll do a prevention uh, in plan. What's a prevention plan? 
our skin SKIM bundle, care bundle. Huh? We use that to, to prevent all this, uh, give all the initial, all the measures to prevent from the uh, developing pressure injury. If patient already, there is some existing pressure injury, so we treat it, okay? Treat, we continue our still the same, the, the, all this uh, um, offload, skin bundle still carry on, still needed to put in, right? So after that, we monitor documentation accordingly. So next slides, uh, yeah, I think that's the end of my presentation. Yeah, okay. I should see here, or just to emphasize on that, 95% uh, pressure injury are preventable. So, so we try to stop, because we all, as we all know, every year we have a stop PID, right? Which is a kind of like, we detect from the redness first, redness, the stage one first. Okay, we detect from the stage one, and from that prevent from further deterioration. All right. Thank you very much. That's the end of my presentation. Yeah. Hope you have Hello, Sister Camilla. Camilla, thank you so much. You. Even though I'm a nurse, I was able to learn more. And uh, thank you for sharing your expertise about good management, especially for pressure ulcer. But before you leave and you don't go, because we have a question from Mr. Singa Ravelan. Have a die? When using this product, do we need to turn the patients to hourly? Is it waterproof? Oh, which product may I know? She's mentioned. Okay. Is when, it prophylactic uh, dressing? Is it she talk about? I, Mr. Uh, Singa, can uh, you elaborate more on uh, what is the product you are uh, referring to turn? Uh, patients hourly, yes. When using, is it waterproof? Uh, it's good. Uh, people okay, I oh. will wait for Mr. Mm. Singer, but there's a question from Justin. Uh, uh. This question goes to Sister Camelia. Mm. Which group of people it is at risk of mm. pressure uh, ulcers? Uh, okay. Good question. Thank yeah, you, very Justin. Good question. So that's why we hospital, right? See, we don't see some particular groups actually. It's once patient admitted to us, so everybody is at risk, we call it. Huh? But we have this breathing skill assessment. There's a category inside, the six parts of category, total about 23 marks. If let's say you do assess, uh, as you assess accordingly, right? Once patient score is at 16, uh, below 15, which means moderate risk. But patients uh, for those particular groups, right, in a way, the patients especially that you see group ICU, patient in ICU with ventilator, ventilator, huh? Yeah, it's a very vulnerable group tend to develop pressure, especially on ECMO or even like CRRT, it's ICU group, huh? I'll come to the another group yet, but it can be elderly. Elderly, 65 years or above, I should see we all can consider uh, this group of people as a uh, tend to be a well pressure injury. And those patients, another group is a very good long hours operation. It's because of prolonged pressure, right? It's once patient has a long hours operation, it's number four hours above, we need to look at it also. Yeah, so it depends patients patient's orthopedic group. The patients have a bad bone, like you guys might call, uh, have a hip feel fracture. Okay, once they become uh, confined to bed. Which means actually any patients are confined to bed with the impaired mobility ability right? So there's a risk. I hope I'm answering your question. Justin. Yes, uh, <laughs> thank you, Justin. I hope uh, Sister Camila was able to answer your question. Okay, for mm. from Stella Nio, what mm. challenges do you face when managing mm. the wound treatment for the patient? Thank you, Stella, ah. for your question. Okay, sure. Hi, Stella. Thank you. Yeah. So basically, what are the challenge I'm facing is that for those patients, uh, uh, bad bone, especially very, uh, for, to be honest, being patient in ICU with high acuity, it's uh, it's very tough, you know, for us to prevent. It's quite honestly, no matter what we do, patient just still happen to get there's a pressure injury, right? Then after that, the patients have an incontinence. You know, once incontinence patients are uh, just purging everywhere, but the best part actually, this particular patient, we are not able to give the containment device. As we mentioned, right, it's a, we have containment device to use, but however, not applicable to everybody, especially patients are low immunity. Yeah, so it's like uh, after that, patients are uh, this area, right? So we need to really to. Uh, to bring in all different type products to help to isolate these areas. To me, it's the most challenging part is the perineal, perineal, uh, the perineal uh, side, the skin, uh, skin damage, I should see with the incontinence and patient bed bomb. 
All right. Okay, so, Sister Camila, before we go to the next guest speaker, we have last question for you. But later on, thank you for all the viewers, especially for Facebook. Um, we will um, read the last question. And then later on, we still have a Q&A after we finish the second speaker. Is that okay? Mm. Okay. okay. Um, Sister Camilia, from mm. Jody Tremano, is there any particular diet, food that may aggravate more pressure ulcers? Good uh, question. It means uh, to help to healing is it promote to healing. I believe the answer is actually yeah. So yes. basically, we definitely we encourage well balanced diet. But well balanced diet. But however, to be honestly, for those particular group patients, right, they are already bad bone. They may maybe also lost the swollen capability. A lot of patients are NG tube. I believe correct. NG tube needs a gastric tube, so they need to have this uh, 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 feeding milk face. So basically, our say uh, depends on patients. Uh, because uh, uh, individual, I should see some patients on this uh, protein, definitely protein milk, right? Huh? Milk. They have glucana or they have uh, um, okay, means neutrina, uh, different types. I should see this a uh, protein um, diet. I should see yeah, the protein diet uh, for this to take in to help with this. Uh, uh, how to say for healing? I know I said some in the market are genie, but we also sometimes you need to let uh, patients uh, uh, conditions actually uh, whether are able to tolerate or not, especially to promote the article uh, genie for the wound healing. All right, yeah, okay. All mm -hmm. right, okay. I one more, one more, sister All from right. Jiggy Robbins Lim. For All cases right. with neuropathy, mm. what would be the best advice? How mm. best we can minimize the risk in terms of pressure ulcers? Well, a bit um, medical oh. term. Oh, then, you well, know, okay. okay, so basically, a lot of patients with diabetes, right? Yeah, they have this problem. They have a uh, this comprised the neuro uh, the, the, the sensation on that. So basically, so it's, uh, that's why it's our assessment very important. Every time, that's why every time, every two hours, as it turning, definitely is the offload, definitely is that. So assessment. Definitely assessment after that with the prevention to early turning, then after that nutrition. Okay, so our skin bundle comes in, I should see. I hope I'm answering your question. Okay, sister, <laughs> I will I will leave it there first. We still yes. have a few more questions. I know there's a lot of questions, mm -hmm. but of course, we need to uh, give it at uh, you know our second speaker, and after that, mm -hmm. we will have a Q&A, three of us later, okay? Yes, sir, Thank you, sister sure. Camilla. I appreciate it, and yeah. I, I really appreciate your sharing. Okay, let's move on with my second guest speaker. Who else? He is the division manager of BMEC, BMEC, who got an experience for, you know, having the product of being the expert on finding the right solution for the all the, pre the prevention of pressure relieving mattress. Was working in BMEC for more than 20 over years. Without further ado, let's uh, welcome Mr. Ken Cheng, my boss. Take it over and thank you for joining me for my webinar. You're muted, Mr. Ken Cheng. M Mr. Ken Cheng, you're okay. muted. All right, uh, Ems, thank you. Okay, you uh, you make me look very old. Huh? I hope I'm, I'm not. Okay. No, you're not. So anyway, let me uh, start by sharing my slides. All right. Thank you. Okay. Can you see my slides? Ems? Everybody can. Put in the comment if you can see the slides. Yes, I can see and you are loud and clear. All right. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you all. Okay, good afternoon to all. I'm uh, going to talk about uh, technological uh, evolution uh, um, on uh, how technologies evolve. Okay, so what is evolution? So, uh, so uh, evolution is about changing, right? From uh, you know the one stage, and then it become advanced, and then things uh, start to get better. Service starts to get better. Product starts to get better. So everything evolve, even human. Right. Okay. So we were monkey before. Now you know we are we are human being. <clears throat> Technology also evolve. Okay. So like smartphones. Eh, now we are using, but in fact, last time it was a you know gigantic bricks. 
Okay, the uh, and the product itself for uh, uh, pressure relief uh, system, the technologies also evolve. Okay, so previously a lot of uh, nurses are using the the bubble type of uh, old type of air mattress. Those are one inch type. Okay, but right now they evolve into a air pressure relief mattress, a full replacement system, which you see on the uh, top right hand corner. Okay, and uh, the other one is a hybrid, which uh, Sister Camellia has clearly pointed out uh, that is currently in use in Parkway Hospital. Okay, so does the term evolve? Uh, the terms, it does uh, change as well. So previously, a definition of pressure redistribution it has been now, uh, the, sorry, the old definition was pressure reduction. Okay, so the new definition right now is pressure uh, redistribution. Okay, and the old definition of pressure ulcer or bit sore now is called pressure injury. Okay. So the, uh, the definition of support services, okay, the overlay, uh, there are overlay system uh, the, and the overlay is uh, again a one inch system. So it goes directly on top of the uh, hospital foam mattress. Okay. And then the replacement system, the one at the bottom, uh, it can be placed onto any hospital uh, bed frame and then you, be, uh, you have to remove the hospital foam mattress. Okay, what is micropore? Okay, I believe the nurses are using this. Huh? So in case if there's any, uh, because the air mattress is made of uh, air cells. Okay, so if you are not careful with your syringe, and then you might create a hole, a puncture in the in the system. And then what does nurses do? Nurses use micropore, right? And then to, you know, to patch it up. But what is micropore then? Micropores are all the micro holes. Right, so it doesn't prevent any leakage into the system. Okay, so we will, um, you know, we will always share with nurses don't use microphone, but you know, use our service. So what kind of service we have? Okay, we we provide a cleaning. Okay, at our laundry area, we bring the system back, we launder it, we make sure that it's clean before next patient use. Okay, and then we will uh, manage the all the microscopic uh, damages. Okay, and we will test every single thing, and then we will test the pump as well before we move it back to the hospital. Okay, the, uh, this is what is happening in the hospital. Okay, the, uh, you see a, uh, let's say a foam mattress uh, that you're using in the hospital. Okay, and then uh, you will never be able to see the underneath unless you unzip it. But most of the foam mattress are welded. Okay, so you will not be able to uh, visibly see what is going on, you know, in a foam, otherwise right under the PU cover. Okay, but th the right hand uh, picture actually shows you Okay, and like a letter eight now. Nah. Okay, so it actually shows you that the uh, mattress is clearly infected. Okay, so while we do our service, right, and all these are the evidence uh, that uh, the the system may be infected, and then we will take a picture, we will send it to the nursing managers, and then they can use it as an educational tool. All right. Okay. Yes, we have a a full infection control capability uh, in our area and then we do the laundry we do the check of the system before we move it back okay so what are the safety precaution all right okay so there is a cpr tap uh, that can release the air instantly from the air mattress uh, that is uh, doing a coat when there's a coat blue uh, that you need to do resuscitation uh, and then you can remove the air um, immediately Okay, and then the nurses jump on and do their resuscitation. Okay, so what is uh, repairing? Uh, Sister Camilla has, uh, you know, uh, talked about this, uh, but I'm going to just uh, illustrate that a little bit. Okay, so the ripper. Okay, so you see pressure going upwards, uh, offloading. Okay, and then uh, the, the opposite direction. So the air mattress, uh, uh, repairing air mattress is supposed to help you uh, to offload the patients. Okay, so that to keep the pressure away as much as possible and then that prevent the pressure saw uh, to set in. And there are two types of uh, alternating pressure mattresses. One is a hybrid mattress on the left, uh, which uh, again Parkway is using that. And uh, what is hybrid? The name hybrid itself, there are uh, uh, two parts to that. One is that the mattress can function as a normal foam mattress and then when the palms is being uh, connected to the mattress, it became it become a air pressure mattress. 
Okay, the, uh, the right one is a total replacement alternating pressure system. Okay, so it has to be used with a pump. Okay, and that is a yeah, air pressure mattress by itself. Okay, so the uh, the RAPM, the um, uh, uh, the air mattress itself, there are three components. Huh? Okay, so you see below there is a two inch foam. Okay, then uh, in the middle part, there is uh, air cells. There are 21 air cells there. And the top cover, the uh, PU cover. So this is a component of the, uh, the air pressure mattress. The hybrid mattress component is uh, uh, illustrated in this diagram. Okay, so it's basically foams uh, that are being covered up by air cells. Okay, so the air cells is embedded the foam. Uh, then when the pump is connected, it will blow up these air cells. Okay, and that becomes a air pressure mattress. Okay, the hybrid mattress uh, component as such. So there are the, there is a static pillow on the head uh, that doesn't ripple. Okay, that the stays uh, static. Okay, so that the, the patient head doesn't move uh, along with the ripple ring. Okay, so sometimes they might feel a little bit, you know, giddy uh, if that starts. Okay, so then yeah, it's, uh, it has a different zone. Okay, so the zone are uh, segregated in such that uh, it will uh, evenly uh, distributed pressure uh, on the uh, on the patients, and they will see that uh, the greenish or somewhat bluish uh, edge. Uh, okay, so that is with the cut uh, laser cut uh, edge that is uh, for the purpose when uh, the bed is uh, sitting up. Okay, allows patient to sit up so it doesn't cause uh, bottom out. Okay, so we will bring the questions out later. Okay, so there are the couple of other technologies I like to illustrate in this uh, opportunity. Okay, uh, as you know, there are you know the nurses turn every two hourly. Okay, especially at uh, nighttime turning, for example. So if you do nighttime turning, patient wakes up. Okay, and then the patient can't get enough rest. And then you uh, may need two nurses to do that turning, okay? And then we do have um, uh, labor shortage right now, right? So then why not look at technologies? So there is a technology called Toto. Uh, Toto is a lateral turning devices, okay? So Toto is it a Singapore pool Toto? No, it's not. Yeah. So it's a lateral turning device on the right hand side. Uh, I will show you the video. Let me sh stop sharing this. I will, I will jump onto the video. Okay, so I hope everybody can see this and uh, can hear me. Uh. Uh, I'm going to narrate it. Um, so basically, this is Toto. So Toto sits on the bed frame. Okay, it has a pump. Okay, what it does is that it has a, a air bladder and then uh, uh, underneath the uh, mattresses. It can be an air mattress on the top or otherwise your hospital foam mattress. So I actually turn the patient every two hourly. Okay. So you see that it turns. Okay, now uh, one side and then the other side is offload. You can uh, control the time of inflation and the time of rest. Okay, so under the study, it's being found that yeah, using Toto, it actually helped uh, the nighttime turning uh, more effective. Uh, okay, and keep the hospital cost down. Okay, I'd like to go back to the main. Let me just stop sharing this. Okay, so the other uh, uh, product is uh, the seat cushions, uh, which uh, Sister Camilla has uh, also pointed out. So the seat cushion is uh, encouraged by um, um, uh, uh, to be used on uh, patients uh, for sitting. 
uh, the reason why when they are sitting, they have more social interaction with um, you know with with uh, somebody else. Okay, and the PTOTs can work with them. Okay, so without a seat cushion, then the pressure sore might develop, uh, and, and that is where the you know the pressure risk uh, might appear. Okay, so and uh, this is also especially true for uh, uh, people that are actually wheelchair bound. Okay, so uh, my friend, uh, my neighbor is uh, having one uh, that is on his wheelchair. He's selling tissue paper. Okay, he's uh, basically uh, he's a wheelchair bound uh, uh, person. All right, so uh, he actually using the uh, the gel type with the uh, with the air cell, uh, the one that uh, the blue color one below. Uh. Okay, so we also have a healing from home website, uh, and uh, all these seat cushions, the um, the air mattresses uh, can be uh, purchased here. Uh, or otherwise, place inquiry here. There is a educational hub, uh, and then people can come in here to learn more about our services and product. You are welcome to visit uh, www.healingfromhome.com. Okay. Well, uh, that's all from me. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we shall take some questions right now, right? Thanks. Back to Hello. You. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Ken Ching, for your sharing of all the solutions or all existing solutions for preventing pressure ulcer. Okay, there's a question from Mr. Pyo Ken To. Are the mattresses, okay, from this one, how often need to apply the skin barrier cream? I think Maybe for me, the question yes, is for me, Mr. am I right? Uh, yeah. It just depends on the strength for skin barrier cream. I'm not wrong. can last for four to six hourly. Uh, so depends on the brands also. In some of some are water-based. Actually, water-based is a kind of like more uh, shorter period. So it means every four hourly. It's a good to apply at least every four hourly to the, the, uh, to the perineal region on the side to produce good protection. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah, or every time patient has a clean, clean the clean, there's a power open or you clean, right? So it's applied on that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I've asked Mr. Singa for the question and yes. he is referring to uh -huh. the hybrid mattress. So maybe uh -huh. Mr. Kenching will answer when using this product, hybrid mattress, mm -hmm. do we need to turn the patients to our knee? And is it waterproof? Okay, so answer the first part now. Uh, whether do we need to turn our patient to hourly, right? So, uh, well, you need a total in order to turn to hourly, yeah. Okay, or otherwise, yeah, the carrier will have to come in to turn them every two hourly. Okay, the hybrid mattress doesn't turn. Hybrid mattress function as a either a foam mattress uh, with the pump, then it became an air pressure mattress. Okay, so whether is it waterproof? Uh, well, nothing is really truly waterproof. Uh. If you put a hole through, then everything else goes through the mattress, right? Okay, so but the top cover, the pure cover, is water resistance. Uh, then uh, uh, as a carer or the nurse, they should watch out for incontinence. Uh, uh, then you, there's a urine pad that uh, you can actually place underneath uh, that prevent water seepage. Okay, but uh, be mindful if the patient has an uh, incontinence issue, uh, watch out for any leakage. Okay, and another more. Right, and um, maybe I, let me add yes. a little bit for these okay. questions. Okay. I want to emphasize on that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. For uh, M mattress does not replace turning. Does not. The only M mattress is able to prolong the pressure, the uh, pressure injury developing. Uh, definitely, it's a kind in a way the, the person maybe can two hours, but instead become three hours, but does not replace uh, the turning. Turning is still able to offload. Huh? Just like we, we on the bed, we turn ourselves. Correct. Yes. Uh, yes. So, yeah. Thank you, Sister Camilla, for the clarifications and information. Let me go again. Maybe it's also who can answer. Are the mattresses can be available for home usage, especially for those bedridden patients that can be treated at home? That's for me, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, let me answer that. Yeah? Okay. So, yes, the air mattresses are available on our Healing from Home website. Uh, please, uh, uh, you know, go in, uh, jump in, and uh, ask all the questions there if you want to, and our people will take it from there. And then they are available uh, for home usage. Uh, we uh, also provide a rental model to the home basis. Okay, so uh, yeah, just uh, send us an inquiry, and then we will be, uh, you know, uh, we will take from there. Thank you. 
Okay, so is there any more questions for our pressure ulcer? I'm very much happy also that we have some interactions with our um, uh, viewers. Okay, another one for Mr. Justin. This question goes to Sister Camilla. Now, Sister Camilla, you're the, fa you're the favorite, huh? How can we manage pressure ulcers? Uh, so how it's to a man a very quite big question, I should say. Yeah. Question, you can um, just, big um, questions. As uh, uh, we all know that pressures, uh, outside pressure injury, there are six types. Six types of deep tissue injury are unstageable. If less is unstageable, probably we want to debride the necrotic tissue, slowly get the uh, necrotic tissue dissolved. We see the granulating tissue, we apply all the dressing products. Huh? We say it depends on the hydrogel you want to apply, or subsequently we apply all this uh, antimicrobial uh, with the absorption like algina, even with silver or iodine based. Uh, even honey based dressing all right for this particular group but for this stage one a deep tissue injury our management is more offload offload with the definitely all the skin like a, a skin assessment the turning offload and mattress definitely is there yeah you have to offload turning is that nutrition is there yeah and also that basically the offload is actually for checking make sure the uh, pressure injury stage one right pressure injuries are, are like uh, resolved with all the interventions then after that for stage two and stage three what it means that stage two the skin breakdown right, right? skin breakdown means uh, like uh, exposed patient can feel painfulness so we can definitely have dressing applied you can apply any like uh, uh, home dressing to help with the treatment stage three basically already going to some cutaneous tissue depends on patients uh, how to body mass so some patients still like a, a very thin person right comes to proficient but the cavity you need to do packing stage three or stage four definitely is either some uh, packing with some anti uh, microbial dress uh, in con uh, content uh, content dressing i should say yeah like a silver iodine based yeah to help with the management or some patient may need like a deep pressure therapy like a, your wet dressing like deep pressure with the machine to suck yeah to promote better granulation and uh, uh, how to say healing all right i'm hoping i hope i'm answering your questions uh, sister you. camilla you're really an expert when it comes to pressure ulcer and wood management <laughs> i'm impressed i'm impressed okay uh last questions before we finish i i have this question from stella neo again yes thank you stella this question goes to mr ken which mattresses do you recommend for people who have back support issues especially the old folk well the um... Well, this seems to be more clinical, sister. <laughs> 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 yeah, with the back support back issues. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay. F even for back, you mean back support? It's me the back not so doing good, is it? Still can use air mattress. It's uh, for the oh yeah. So the oh, I think maybe patient sitting on your chair. She's talking about is is it yeah, mattresses? So mattresses. mattresses. Uh, mat mattresses or uh, mattress oh which mattress and, and mattress is possible is it so hybrid use? mattress is still suitable for the suitable. back support issues yes yes uh, oh, yes things. unless it's, it's a, a contraindicate i don't think it's a contraindicate for spinal yes. injury am i right yes. unless the doctor say oh unless patients you see rb there's a spinal injury doctors you know totally out yeah, so totally. Yes. Uh, even my patient act more. I tried to really see. I got the opportunity to apply a mattress. Honestly, yeah. Unless there's a, she see this. Uh, she mentioned the contraindication like spinal injury. Doctor see or oh, no? Yeah, so we don't yes. apply a mattress. Yeah, uh, just maybe just normal like a static like a report mattress. It's just static. No uh, alternating air. Yeah, just a normal air, but uh, no no alternating air moving like that type. All right. Yeah. Okay. This, uh, <laughs> yes okay thank you sister camille yeah okay now we i'm sorry to say it's the end of our webinar but i'm looking forward for more webinars with you sister and for mr kenching for looking forward next topic maybe okay so again thank you very much for all the viewers especially linkedin facebook and youtube who all, who i you know we have a some interactions and good questions i appreciate for joining us and for those who wants to inquire for all our products healing from home www.healingfromhome.com and we can check also our website www.bmec.asia.com also for all the updates and 
um, now uh, a lot of products, okay? So from the bottom of my heart, Mr. Camilla and Mr. Kenching, thank you for joining. And thank you, Calvin, who is BTS, behind the scene always, was doing all this. Thank you very much, Calvin. And then I always tell this, and just now, Sister Camilla mentioned, prevention is better than cure. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining us. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye -bye. Stay safe. Yeah. Yes. Bye.